or even more. So, right, okay, so I'm going to be quiet and then we will start. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Camelita podcast. This is where you learn to live like a champion. On today's episode, I have got a gentleman who I admire so much because of his heart for business and for teaching entrepreneurs what they need to do to become indeed a success. Alex Stern, he's an entrepreneur, speaker, mentor, investor, and so many other things. But more importantly, he is America's startup success expert, and he'll tell us why. He has performed and shared the stages and done amazing speaking engagements across the world, including CEO Space, which I, I remember Bernie very well, Power Team International, with the one and only Bill Walsh, Secret Nog, which I also know. Um, what, what, oh, you know his name, right? Him, yeah, yeah. Who works at Sharon? He's amazing. Um, and Happy Choose Warrior, also I know him as very well. So yeah, quite a lot of people that I know, but more importantly, I would say he is a founding member of eight startups, five exits, three IPOs, and three acquisitions, you would think that he's had enough, but no, because he has been selected recently, Influence 100 Authority List by Influencer Magazine. And, you can, and he will tell us why. In 2020 though, he was a two-time Visionary Award winner um, for all his works in developing and building startups. Today, he's an amazing keynote speaker, teaching entrepreneurs truly how to have startup success. So welcome to the Camelot Podcast, Mr. Alex Stern. Oh, thank you for such a warm, warm welcome. I appreciate it. Well, look, Alec, come on. Why in God's name do you start all of these companies, IPOs, accusing? I mean, like, why? Some, some people start, some people start with one. And they're like, yeah, I've done my views. I'm going to move on. Why so many? What is the passion behind it? Yeah, so I mean, just there are those of those of us in life that are uh, innovators, right? Um, mm. You know, I mean, we're, we're by the way, all of us are innovators. Now, the, the only difference between uh, someone who claims they are and they're not. You know, I, I ask in conferences, raise your hand. How many of you think you're an innovator? Ten percent of the hand raises the room or, or raises their hand. And so, the difference is that, like, on any day, week, or month, do you? You experience a product or service that you'd say, well, that could have been done better. That if that product had these features, if the service was executed this way, there are a lot of industries where this is how we always did it. And we're going to continue to always do it this way. And so if you have, if you see something that can be done better and you noodle on it and you share it with mm -hmm. others, you, you tell a friend and they're like, I want that too, you know, and, and you do something that you're an innovator. So we're all innovators if we take action. Ooh. And so I'm an innovator. I see, I see things every day. I see, a, I see it, large billion dollar industries that are asleep at the wheel that haven't done something you know, to disrupt it. And so there's room for someone to step in and do that. And that's, <laughs> that's been my passion and, and I, being an innovator myself and having been involved with starting so many different businesses to help different target markets. You know, I'm I'm not stopping. I have I'm, I'm well, what's the drive? What's the drive? I have six new ones today that I'm a co-founder of. What's so the just... drive? Why is it? Is it people you want to help? Is it technology you want to advance? What is the drive behind it? Yeah. So the drive. So for me, it's a it's a passion to help my target market. So mm -hmm. many of the businesses I've started have helped small businesses. You know, and in the U.S., the economy is the economy is driven. Uh, and the GDP is driven by small business. So mm -hmm. those are the main street businesses that we all know and love. And, and so, you know, I, I've set out uh, with a few of the businesses so far and, and have new ones still that I'm working mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. to help that small business succeed. And if I can help a lot of them, it's going to, you know, it, they're, they're the folks that are driving this economy. You know, a lot of them are building a business mm. to, you know, to have it be family run and create a legacy and, and have some independence for themselves and their family. And, and so, you know, they're the American dream. And I, you know, and I'm just driven by helping them. That's, and so finding ways to provide products and services to help the target market is what it drives me. Mm. Now, more of them, you know, on the back end, you always you get rewarded for it. I don't look at the reward. I look at how I'm helping them. Has your past, and this, so there's two questions. Oh, I remember his name now, Greg Reed. I know, Greed, this, yeah. I know Greg very well. Um, has your past helped shape this passion 
to do what you're doing now? Yeah, and so 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 growing up, um, you know, we were provided for, but but if I wanted something, you know, uh, I'd have to go make the money. So I was an mm-hmm. entrepreneur starting at the age of eight, cutting lawns, shoveling snow, detailing cars, cleaning garages, you know, handyman for the neighborhood. I had other little, you know, younger kids helping me, you know, and so so I would raise the money myself if I wanted something. My mom was an entrepreneur and. So I got to the taste of helping her in her business at times. And, um, and so I didn't start as an entrepreneur. I mean, I was in big business first and somebody eight levels above me said, Hey, I'm going to this startup and I can't promise you in six months if I could pay you or we're going to be around, but if, but if it works out, you know, this could, you know, could be a big thing for, for, for you. And I had about, I don't know, $4 million of business that I, that was pending. And I thought, wow, you know, I, that's a trade-off. The four million kind of in the hand that I could close, or not have a job in six months. I'm yes. so like, what do I do? So I closed some of that business. You know, I said I need a little time. Let me think about it. So in three months, I closed some of the business, and then I called him and said, I want to, I want to come along. Wow. So I joined this company that was a you know a startup. So I was on the founding team, and and then five years later, we had an IPO, and and shortly thereafter, we were acquired. Um, and so. So I, I didn't really know, kind of, you know, got options, you know, which wow. you know, we, went, we went public and it became stock. And, and then I'm like, this piece of paper is worth what? Like, I, was just, <laughs> I couldn't comprehend it, you know, and I'm like, wow, okay, how do I do that again? So, you know, I just, uh, I kept going earlier and earlier and earlier in the cycle for starting businesses and, and seeing, seeing opportunities. I was so tell us then, tell us, stay right there with that. Tell us, tell us, tell us. For people that are listening, and I'm going to be sharing this all over, and you're going to be on your summit, so people are going to hear it again. What do you look for in some of these startup companies? Let's say someone is listening and they're like, oh my God, I need to talk to him now, because I know a few people have been asking me about getting funding and about getting with uh, in angel investors and in other investors because they've got they're, they're at a they're a startup and they want to do this. I went, what do you look for? How, how do you vet them? How do you know that this one will work for you? Right. So 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 there's two things mixed in there. The first one is these are companies I've been involved with in starting or being on the founding team. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. And the second the second thing is I am part of a venture fund, um, limited partner in G20 Ventures in Boston. We do East Coast tech investments and. And I've also done some angel investment work, which most of most of that now I'm just investing in my own companies. I've got six that I'm a co-founder of. And but mm-hmm. but so if I were to uh, first and foremost, people come to me every day. You know, what do you think of my idea? And my mm-hmm. response to any of them is doesn't matter what I think. What does your target market think? Mm-hmm. We don't go early enough to our target market to bring our idea and get 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 brutal, honest feedback from, you know, don't go to family because they're going to tell you they love you. <laughs> And you're gonna be a, you're gonna be a big success one day. You don't go to friends because they're gonna you know drink the Kool Aid and tell you oh you're so great. You go to people you don't know, and if you can um, talk to them and you can share your idea and they get wide eyed like wow this this would you know is this something you see yourself using? Yes. Is this something you see yourself paying for? Of course. If it could do that, I would love it. And you're solving a problem from them. You, know? so you got to qualify first from them. What do they have that they want more of? What don't they have that they wish they had? What's their vision? You know, they want to save time. They want to save money. Do they want to increase revenue? Stay engaged with their customers, get more customers. Like they're going to tell you what they want. And if you play back then what you have, then you know you're onto something. Wow. And so that's the first thing that we, we don't go early and we don't go off into the target market to validate our idea. Because that is going to be one of the key things if you're going to turn around and now go get investment. Mm. They're going to say, you know, what is the, what's your target market say, right? So they're going to go and want to get invest. You're going to go want to go and get investment and they're going to want to see that because, because, you know, you can't work in a vacuum and you can't say, well, I used to be the target market. So I kind of know what they need because yeah. it changes every day. Yeah, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Stay yeah, right there. On. I want to talk about this because I, because this is good. I want to talk about this. Stay right there with that point. You of all people know, Right. The last 18 months has been interesting to say the least, okay? And that whole thing about you can't stay where you are, so many businesses have gone under because they decided to stay where they are and ride it out. And they just literally went out because of that. Now, as a small business, as America's startup small business expert, what do you want to say to people right now who are listening that are 
they're like, oh my God, I need to change. I don't know what to do to change. I, I know I need to move forward. Pandemic has hit me or pandemic has given me an opportunity. What do you want to say based on this whole thing about early and often to those people? Sure. Yeah. So I love the question. So the first thing is that I'll ask people, what's your three or five year vision? Where do you see yourself? Where do you see the business in three or five years? And they'll tell me where they want to be. And I'm like, are you working on something today that's getting you there? And hemming and hawing, half of them say no. Oh. Right. So we're on a hamster wheel doing business all day long. And it's not not getting us closer to what we want in the vision of our business. Mm -hmm. So so this is the time where you have to stop, get off the hamster wheel. And you want to work on your business, not in the business, right? So you're going to look at strategy and you're going to, you might, you know, your, your bigger opportunity might be one lane to this either side of, on the highway than the lane you're in. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to go and assess this and look at it. And I, I'm not a fan of the word pivot, but, but, but you've got to just, just see like, you know, you could be so close to the solution and, you know, Greg Reed, who's a dear friend and, yeah. um, you know, he wrote three feet from gold. I have it. I, I've been with him with Sharon. <laughs> So they're, they're both dear friends. And so, 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 and um, in fact, I'm speaking at Secret Knock in September. Um, you know, I speak every time there's a Secret Knock. And, and so the bottom line is that like, you, you know, you, you're, you might be so close to the bigger opportunity you just, you can't see it because you're just so focused on the tactics of your business. You got to focus and work on strategy. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, you know, a lot of people, you know, we're, we're just like, well, I'm going to wait till this, well, I'm going to ride this out and then I'll open up back, you know, when I can yeah, open up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are so many things you could do. You could be doing like we've all accepted virtual. We've all mm -hmm. accepted this thing called Zoom and StreamYard and and doing these virtual video calls and so on. And so I, I, I would ask so many, what are you doing to 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 not wait, but to get in front of your customers virtually, you know, yes. and, and in other ways? So a great example, talk to a, talked to a gallery, art gallery. I'm like, where's all the art? They're like, oh, it's locked up. You know, we got it locked up in our, in our store. And, and when we can open up, we'll take it back out and whatever. I'm like, why don't you take, pick an artist, take four or five pieces of work, curate, curate a virtual mm -hmm. art show where you're going to show those, pull the, pull the artist on and have mm -hmm. them talk about their backstory, have them talk about the, what motivated them to paint that painting and whatever it may be. And so, you know, the bottom line is that they, uh, and I said, you share, you know, you, you share it and you encourage everyone yeah. to do watch parties. And uh, so the, the first one they did, they sold a painting. And so I was like, wow, that's incredible. Who bought it? And they said, well, it's really interesting. It was nobody we knew. Like wow. our customers, one of our customers did a watch party and one of the people watching the watch party bought a painting. See? Right. So, so you just think, okay, how to how, like, you know, look at a restaurant, the restaurant, like, um, you know, they could, they could create a, a, like a shopping list for the family, mm -hmm. like do a family interactive dinner with the chef. Right. So you, you do like, um, you know, cook with the chef. Right. So, so you go to the store, you buy all the stuff on the list. You know, and they, they even give you pairings for wine for the parents. And then and then you it tells you what prep stuff to do before the you know the, this starts at 7 p.m. I love it. I love it. And then you then you actually, you know, curate a whole, you know, uh, cooking with the chef program and you prepare the meal and then the family enjoys the meal together. You know, and, and so like so now the, the chef is coming to your home. And and so so some of the restaurants were creating like a subscription to where it was like a monthly or bi-weekly you know, cook with the chef, you know, um, din uh, uh, you know, dinner with the family, you know, so there's all kinds of ways that you can be mm -hmm. creative. And, and this thing of virtual is not going anywhere. Well, do you know what? Let's talk about that. Because again, as America's startup success expert, let's talk about that because you are right. We are never going to go back to what we did before. It's never going to happen. We want the interaction. So we will go out a bit more but this whole area of people not having to travel, not having to dress up, not just going to wear your jammies underneath, you, you, you're going to carry on doing business. Like you're going to carry on if you're making money, you're going to carry on doing a lot of it. Why is it then, or I should say, from your perspective as an investor, from your perspective as America's startup success expert, for people that are wanting to relaunch something or launch something new right now, what are some of the areas they cannot avoid? Now, you talked about video. That's clearly one, hugely one. 
Give me one or two other areas that you teach your the people that you invest with that you've been using in your business they cannot avoid over the next five to ten years. Yeah, so so I'm um, I'm again we're, pa- we're unpacking that. There's a lot. So so if we're talking about investment, mm. you know, then then uh, I want st- I'll stick to that piece because you mentioned investment. And so so you know, there's things you can't avoid. Like you you've got to um, you've got to have a large you know a, a solving a large business. There's a big problem. So there's a big mm. market. There's a big problem, and here are the players that are doing it today, and they're not solving it. And here's how we're, mm-hmm. you, and here how we're solving. You got to be able to tell that story. Yeah. You got to be able to um, show that the, that you have a team, yeah. right? It's not just one founder. There may be you know a few co-founders, and and sort of who's that leadership team, um, and then you have to be able to demonstrate that hook or crook. Like you will, you will, if, if the ship's going down, you're going to find the solution to, to, to yeah. write the ship. You're going to, you're going to do everything to solve whatever the problem, because, because we run into problems and that's usually when people get stuck and it weighs on them and yeah. they want to take their bat and ball and go home. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're, you know, you're set up to where you will, you've got the, the, the right team to, to, to do whatever it takes to solve this. And then, and then the big thing is that you have the answer on how you're going to scale the business mm. that you've really really looked at, you, you know, go get a couple of customers, you, you know, today, you, today you can get customers that'll give you feedback, success stories, potentially pay you. Yep. And that so directionally that this is our target market and we're serving them and they love it. Now, how do we go get more of them? And the answer in most cases, and it has been for me is channels, strategic mm. alliances, um, you know, the, all of the companies I had the most success with, including Constant Contact, we were a hundred percent channels when we started. Wow. We had we when we the uh, you know playing it forward when the company sold, you know we had over eight thousand channel partners. So it was a hundred percent when we started. It takes a, a the, the flywheel of a new business takes a while. The flywheel of of a channel business takes takes a while as well. Mm. Uh, there's a lot to, to unpack there. But the bottom line is that if an investor says like so, if your target market small business, Main Street small business. You can't go door to door on Main Street around the world. You know, mm-hmm. just not going to yeah. have the hands to do it. And you can't afford that. So if, a, if an investor says, you know, how are you going to scale the business? The answer is not hire 100 salespeople, especially if it's something to, to small business. If you had an enterprise solution or something larger, $10,000 or more, and it, it required more handholding, sure, you're going to hire more, more mm-hmm. salespeople to have that one-to-one relationship. Mm-hmm. But in all other instances, there's a channel that has a one-to-many scenario, Indeed. You go through a partner, an intermediary that has, uh, in some cases, a trusted relationship with your target market, but they'll get you in front of your target market in mass. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you something, you're saying that I'm laughing because we're just about to launch our club, our global club, and we have a global um, champion members who are going to be the people that's going to tell the world about the club and why they should join the club and why they should be a part of this a global platform that we're, we're developing. And I'm super excited because it's not about me. It's about everybody that's in the club. And it's about the council members that's there. It's about those people and the impact they're going to make. So it, it is going one to many. And I just love where you shared about why people can't afford to avoid these things do you think it's neglect why before the pandemic people weren't looking at these things or was it comfort zone what do you think was the real reason why a lot of people end up crashing and burning in the pandemic yeah so so i I mean just the pandemic aside because these are problems that existed before and the pandemic Mm. in some cases maybe exacerbated things a little bit but but the bottom the bottom line is that that um you know we should always be looking at our business and how we're running it today to see if there's a bigger opportunity adjacent to it. And in a lot yeah. of cases, there always is. So yeah. that's just something we always should be doing. And, and a yeah. lot of people don't. I get it. They get on that, again, that hamster wheel of doing the day-to-day tactics. Mm. You don't have time. You got to make time. You got to invest in yourself, you know, and, 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 you know, surrounding yourself with, with a peer group of, of yeah. other, other people that are at your level and some that are yeah. ahead of you. So that you can you know, get get some insight to where where this is going to go, you've got to be able to handle obstacles. Obstacles is one of the yeah. things. The stuck point, like we get stuck when we have an obstacle. If you 
when I first started and I had to deal with obstacles, I would take a piece of paper, I'd write the obstacle down, put a little box next to it and hope I checked it at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, I got involved in all this stuff and I avoided it. I didn't want to look at the paper. And the next day I walked in and it's still there. And the next day, oh, I <laughs> and guess what? You know, you're not the first one that has this obstacle, right? So mm -hmm. go see counsel, go find yeah. something succeeded at knocking it down someone who failed at knocking it down and why someone who broke it into smaller pieces and got some little wins to knock it down because you have to develop the muscle memory to knock these things down because behind that one is a bigger obstacle yeah so if you were stuck now you're going to be even more stuck the next time and the next time and the next time so we have to develop this the ability to knock these down and and you have to find your rhythm for how you do that. Mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people just use you use these these uh, obstacles as the excuse to just freeze. You know, are they are, are it's fear? Are they freeze? Or they are they just it weighs on them more and more? Mm -hmm. and they want to throw in the towel. I'm done. And so there's mm -hmm. there's, there's opportunities in this learning opportunities. Um, and so there there are all these things that we just have to like really take some time to step back and assess. You know, so let me let, let's come back to what you do because clearly a lot of people come to you because they're in this exact space. They don't know what to do next. And you obviously show them how to make time to invest in themselves and sort of what they should do, how to handle obstacles, which is what you just shared, and also how to find their own rhythm in doing it, because you can tell them, but they've they got to find their own rhythm. Tell us if someone comes to you. What is the process? How do you work with them? How do you help them? How do you support them? Because like everybody wants to do IPOs and everybody wants to sell a business and everybody wants to do whatever. What exactly, how can they come to you? And what is the sec first, second, third step? How, how does it work? Yeah, so I appreciate that. But uh, I'm sort of the, I'm more of the analogy of the chef who opens a cabin and just grabs stuff and makes something as opposed to pulling out the recipe and following it, right? And I say that because every situation is different. Mm -hmm. If I came and said, here's the three steps for one person would not be the same three steps for the mm -hmm. next person. So the first thing is really assessing where they are and, yeah. and, and where what, what is their unique value proposition? Where do they fit against others? Um, are they set up for success? You know, there's a lot of places where there's problems. And one of the problems is that, you know, we don't stay in our lane. Like yeah. we all have expertise in a certain area and we don't stay in the lane of what we're good at. So mm. we migrate over into another lane while well, someone had to do it, right? So yeah. for example, I might be in business development and I'm the front facing person to building the relationships of partners, customers, investors, whatever. Mm. But we need a website. Well, let me go learn the website tool and I'll build it myself. It could take me 20 hours <laughs> you know, I'm gonna learn this thing and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and it's not gonna be perfect. I'm gonna have to keep working on it. But so there's an opportunity cost, right, uh, in this whole thing. So for example, if my time is worth $100 an hour and I just spent 20 hours building the website, that's two grand. Indeed. If I was over on the other side doing on what I do best, I could get probably 40 hours worth of stuff done in 20 because I'm good at it. Yeah. And, and the fact that I'm not doing, there's an opportunity cost that I'm not growing the business that way. Mm -hmm. Now I go over and say, okay, if I brought somebody in, a fractional, you know, web developer, uh, a, an admin, a VA, a, an intern, a whatever, to help me build the website. Could they do it in ten? Sure. Could they do it for less than hundred dollars an hour? Sure. If I spent that money over there, then I'm I'm doubling down in and and growing the opportunity that in staying in my lane and then getting what I need here, getting it done right the first time in most cases, and then being able to <laughs> double down, right? So we often will just say, well, we don't have the funds or I can just learn it myself and do it myself. And that has too much of a cost. Yes. And we don't, we don't stay in our lane. Yes. And we really need to figure out what our lane is and stay there. Oh, uh, do you know what? I, I'm just, for everybody that's listening and, that, and I will be sharing clips of the video. Like this right there is the reason why small businesses go under because they're trying to be everything to everyone and not understanding the value of their time compared to someone else's time. Right. You know, a friend of mine, we were talking the other day and he said, you know, our focus has to be on owning the land, not working the land. And I was like, yay, yeah, I absolutely it. love it. So, so I'll, give you, I'll give you the other great analogy I use often. Um, you know, so, so, a chef owning a restaurant, 
right? There's the, the he has to have a partner at the front of the house, mm. right? Because he can't be managing both. But also there's all the needs for, for to be active on social media and other yes. things. So how many chefs do you know have a, have a skillet in one hand and a keyboard in the other? <laughs> None. None. And they shouldn't. They should. I love it. I love it. You gotta find some. And so I so I've often challenged some some of the chefs. They're like, oh, well, we gotta do this, but I don't have time. You don't need to make the time. You've got to find someone else has the time. Indeed. Look at your staff. You have a young staff, right? And you have downtime between you know the lunch, the lunch shift and the dinner shift. At, you know, somebody either studied marketing or they're really they love to be on social media. Could somebody just step in and guide and help? And in every instance, and I said, I want, to, I want you to report back to me if you have that person on your team. Every time they're like, I got that person. <laughs> they just never asked because they're like, I gotta, I gotta do it, right? And they have that person sitting on the floor in the corner of the restaurant on a, when it's dead, dead mid afternoon, yeah. the computer. Well, guess what? They could be doing, you know, doing posts on social and-, and I then, love it, you know, I love it. And you're paying them anyway. I, I love it. I mean, I, I see why you are Americas, small business, startup, success, expert. I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it because it's very practical, but it's what is needed. It's what people need to do every day. And you know what? There are some big companies that are still missing the boat with some of these things that are still missing in, you know, sort of what they should be doing with their staff and utilizing the skills of their staff. And, you know, let's talk about one last thing before we close off this uh, session today. Perfectionists, I, I always say to perfectionists, stop holding yourselves back. Uh, and so a lot of small business owners are perfectionists and they feel this is the way to do it and this is the only way to do it. But you're right, they're not utilizing the skills that are within the organization. Speak to some of the perfectionists that are listening right now, please. Listen, I'm a, I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here to admit it. Uh, but, but, you know, you learn, you, you have to learn that it's good enough, right? And that was a hard thing for me. Like, well, no, no, if we spend a little bit more time on this, we can maybe, it's no, it's good enough. And we always would joke, like decisions need to be made in two minutes. Like we got to go, we can't, we can't, the velocity, we can't be playing, you know, playing around spending all this time. So I had to learn, I had to learn, you know, cause, cause you know, you, you end up, you know, stalling and I'll give you the, I won't even, I'll just give you the best example of, of yes. the perfect perfectionist like, uh, you know, the, the, the largest perfectionist I know. <laughs> He's eight years in with a startup as an entrepreneur and hasn't launched yet because new technologies, new things coming out. We got to rework this. We're changing this under the covers. AI, oh my God, we got this. We got augmented reality now. We got like, you know, it's just nonstop. And I said, you have missed the window. Wow. It's over. Now there's competitors in the space. Like a first mover who was just so concerned with making, you know, being perfect at everything, eight years later, still hasn't launched. Wow. So now it's too late, now it's too late. And so, wow. so we can't, we, we have to get out of our own head around this. And, and, and if you're really concerned um, that it needs, needs more time, needs, mm. we, gotta, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta noodle on it more and rework it, mm -hmm. target market and get feedback. Yes. Again, you don't, you shouldn't be working in a vacuum here. Anything you're doing, marketing, messaging, you know, the user experience, the offering, the pricing, the whatever, go to your target market, aided, unaided, you know, uh, just show them something, throw it in front of them. What do you think? Or guide them. Like, this is, we're thinking of this pricing competitors are around this range. What do you think? Like, you can do a lot of different things to go to your target market and get that feedback. You know and what? I'm out, listening to you. You know, I've got so many people I want to introduce to be on their podcast. Like, seriously, this needs to be shared. Like, literally, people need to hear. I mean, we share it, but like, people need to hear this. Right. They need to hear this. I've got some people I want to introduce you to to be on their podcast because, yeah, you just you just got to keep sharing this thing. I mean, I, I can understand now why after all the IPOs and all the acquisitions and all the everything, why you're so passionate to share and to speak and to deliver this content because they need it. Oh, it's yeah. So one last question. One last question. What does living like a champion mean to you? Oh, I love the question. Um, so I not I, I have not always lived like a champion because as I would define it, uh, um, it's playing at the highest levels in every aspect of your life, I guess. Mm. Was, you know, top of head, that's the first thing that comes to mind. And so I wasn't playing at top of top, you know, at the top of my game in every area of my life. 
like I was sacrificing things, you know, and I, um, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, relationships because I was just working so hard or like I had to really find the balance. And when um, I, I just, I didn't see a, I didn't have a good role model in, <laughs> in the balance uh, growing up. My dad was a workaholic and, and so he really wasn't present for the family a lot. So I never wanted to go into business. In fact, when I went to college, I, I wanted to go for sociology. I didn't want to go near business because it, I just saw how it was from the home, you know? Wow. And then finally, after a semester of that, it was a little too touchy-feely for me. I went into business. I couldn't see you being a <laughs> So I switched over to business. And then I got out of college and then a couple of levels above me in a, in a larger company that I first joined, um, I saw somebody who was very, very successful, who oh. was balanced, balanced in every part of his life. And like, he would literally say, I've got to leave the meeting a, a few minutes early because I've got to go watch my son's baseball game or I've got to do this or that or, or I have to pick up my daughter or I have to do this with the family or we're, we're not, I'm not here next week because I'm taking them away. For, like, he was just present for every aspect oh. of life. And he also, you know, was, he was an avid reader. He was, a, you know, he, he, he invested in himself and did things that he loved. And, and I thought, wow, this is, this is about someone who's balanced. And mm -hmm. I had a role model that showed me like yes. to live like a champion, you have to play at top of your game in every aspect of your life. Yes. And there are times where you get knocked down, health issues, this, that, and the other yeah. family yeah. issues, you know, whatever those things are that, that can knock you down, that happens. But, but how do you rise, rise back up back up after you're you've dealt with something. And oftentimes we don't, we just sort of stay mm. at another level. And if you don't have the balance of every, like spinning the plates, you know, you're spinning plates yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. You know, one, they're gonna, some are gonna fall, they're gonna fall off if you're not balanced, if they're oh. not the same speed. Do you know, listening to you say there's so many entrepreneurs need to listen to this. I tell you, I've learned the hard way, God first, family second, business third. I've learned the hard way to have balance. Oh my God, I, I have learned the hard way. So, you know what? Thank you so much for finishing off with that. Because I think in everything, when I ask people, what does it take to live like a champion? Nobody ever says how much more money they can make. Like nobody. Everybody always says, it's about family. It's about balance. It's about sanity. It's about giving back. They never, ever talk about money. It's amazing. Right. And I, and I, the other day, somebody asked me like, you know, well, what do you do to, to increase wealth? I'm like, I don't think about that. I think about, you know, helping others, like helping mm. the target market, helping people, you know, from, from a social impact perspective, or yeah. I feel fulfilled giving back, paying it forward, whatever those yeah. things are yeah. like, that's wealth to me. And it's in, it's in your heart. It's in your mind. You know, it's not in, just in a bank account. Mm. Yeah, that's so powerful. Remind me, I wanted to introduce you to Dr. Diane Hamilton. You need to be on a podcast. I was just on her show. I was just on her oh, show. Oh, I love her. I love her. And then there's another guy. Um, you need to be on his podcast. I mean, he's got millions and millions of listeners, and he is so, oh, he would love you. Like, he would so love you. Like, he would love you. So I'll introduce him as Mark. So remind me. Um, yeah, you do need to be on his, on his podcast. Thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. I mean, I loved it. I took so many notes. I can't wait to share it. I can't wait to have you on the summit. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I look forward to it. And July 13th, I look forward to it. Indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Right, guys. You've heard it here from the one and the only. Oh, don't forget, he is America's startup, small business, success expert, Mr. Alex Stern. And he shared some really valuable tips. I think he, some of the things he talked about really truly being passionate about your target market, finding the, finding the right team, understanding the right venture, you know, all, all the things in which he's done, do it early and often. If you truly want to understand what you're doing, understand your target market early and often. Stop getting on that hamster wheel. Stop, stop and take stock. Look at where the business is going. What is your three to five year vision. What are you going to do when it's not going to work anymore? And more importantly, what you should avoid. Again, what you should avoid. Look at the team. Look at what problem you're solving. Look at where you're going. I mean, all these strategic channels. Seriously, look into it. And by all means, always, 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 he says, look for the bigger opportunity. Learn to handle obstacles. Make time to invest in you. And so if you are listening to this, the, all the notes are there 
follow him, send him a direct message. He's all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. You just send me a message and say, I need your help. I am a small business. I really need to, to get all these principles in place so that I can live truly like a champion. Reach out to him today. Don't do it tomorrow. You know me, I'm all about getting your action, doing it right now. So get it done or get help. Reach out to him. Don't forget, this is Kamalita here from Kamalita.com saying I'll see you soon. And you know, I will see you at the top.